Hello, welcome back everyone to the Tress Grind. It's a new day. Let's start a game and see what we can do. So a lot of people said that my openings are really slow and I'm going to have to agree with them. And someone recommended playing um, an opening like the London system because you can basically blitz it out every single game as white and you should be okay. So I'm going to try that this game and see how that goes. Um, I think I'm playing it right so far. I believe. Um, let's see. So we basically get everything out. And then what do we do? Pawn c3. And then bishop. I guess in this case, we can go bishop e2. Let's see. What do you guys think is the correct response here? I'm okay to trade the knight. Well, maybe we go... Maybe we go bishop d3, since the knight's already defended by the queen. And d3 is more London system-y. Could also pin his knight, but I feel like that's just too aggressive. So if he decides to take the knight on f3 here, I'm happy to re recapture with the queen. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, so if I go e5 with the pawn, he recaptures. And then my f4 bishop is under attack. So I can always scoot back to g3. I'm okay with that. I could also... No, I can't trade off um, with the knight here, obviously, because my queen is pinned. So I'll scoot back to g3. And then he has a sick fork here, which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, a bit of a bummer. I should have seen that coming. So so what should have been the move here? I guess if I wanted to avoid this, I probably should have went bishop e2 from the start or b5. <clears throat> or maybe I shouldn't have taken that pawn. Maybe that should have just been the play. Hmm. Really good move by him though. Um, obviously I don't want to lose this. What would I rather lose? Well, yeah, I'm in a little bit of a pickle here. I think I'll recapture with the knight. Hmm. <laughs> bit of a tough spot do i protect with the bishop or do i go pin his knight on b5 i think i'll add another defender since he has two attackers well, i guess i do already have two defenders huh the knight on d2 and the queen I think I blew a little bit too much time on that move. It's going to be a really awkward pawn structure, but maybe I can just cast a long. I think this is still okay. We're still even, so... Yeah, I don't want to develop kingside anymore. Hmm. I need to be mindful that this pawn will hang. Um, his kingside is open here, so maybe I should just go for the trade here. I'm not going to accept the draw. <laughs> I don't want the draw. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Naga, Nagatapachoi, Nagatapachoi. 
Naga, Naga. Not gonna work here anymore. Bonus points if you know what quote that movie's from. Okay. So I can inflict a little bit of damage this way. I could always just push. Hmm. Should I push or take? He has two attackers on d4 there. I have no defenders. So it's going to leave me hanging. E4 is not attacked by anything. I think I'd rather just let him push this pawn. Hmm, man, he's already done up two pieces of material. Bit of a bummer. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want your draw, man. What can I do here? Hmm. I do have this. He's forced to block with the pawn, and then I can just... Or no, I can't. I can't do that. Um, let's see. Suppose I have check on e5 next. Help block, I go e5. Maybe that's the play. I could also go um, b5. And then at least capture a pawn. Yeah, so this way he's just blocked himself in, which is good. Um, so green. This is actually pretty good for me. Um, I think I'll go check this way. And I believe I get a free queen out of this. That's kind of a nice skewer there. Nice little tactic. I think he should have blocked with the pawn there. I think that would have been better for him. Um, now I do have... Okay, nice. Um, yeah, I don't know if that guy had to run or something. Um, so let's talk about... Let's see. You know what? Before we talk about it, let's go to the real game review. Uh, to be fair, I think he had to run there if he was offering the draw so early. I think maybe his um, maybe his someone was cooking dinner for him. I don't know who that someone would be. <laughs> but anyways, let's go through it. So we were pretty even up until about the middle, and then he had the advantage. And then looks like I played one blunder, but I still had a big advantage. Or no, was that his blunder? I think that might have been his blunder. Yeah, that was his blunder, sorry. And then I was able to follow up with it with a good move. But um, yeah, so let's talk about this opening. Okay, so he was attacking the d4 pawn there with his knight, so I defended with a pawn, which the engine likes. You found a move to defend your pawn. Okay, that's great. F6 is excellent, one of the best moves. Okay. You followed a great chess principle and developed a new piece. Yeah, so this is kind of where I was, um, where I was debating earlier between bringing the bishop um, over more to a centralized square or to b5 to basically pin his knight. Um, and it looks like the engine did prefer that as well. So I'll have to keep that in mind for next time. Hmm. Attacking with the pawn makes sense. So I did have a bit of a lead here, and I kind of threw it down the toilet after this move. I overlooked an opportunity to kick a bishop there. So what does engine analysis say if I just take here? Okay, so I still have a pretty good advantage here, even if he were to take the knight there. Okay, so I need to keep that in mind. I think I just had the wrong idea with the bishop here. Uh, really good move by him. What should I have done here? By threatening a queen. Oh. Oh, right. G5 because it was defended by the knight. 
Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I was so fixated on these first five uh, ranks that I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on here. Again, one of my weaknesses I'm trying to work on is examining the entire board. Hmm. So his queen was on an open green diagonal or dark di dark square diagonal, and I had a dark square bishop. So I should have realized that a little bit more. I'm so used to just falling back with the bishops in the opening game that this seemed like the only natural thing to do. But yeah, obviously bishops can attack as well. So hmm. interesting. Yeah, and then really good fork by him. Take with the knight. Hmm. I didn't even consider that. So take with the knight, he takes, and then what would I do? Hmm. Take, and then he always does have, he's up a piece, so he always would have the option to trade the queen here, which I normally, if I'm going to trade queens, um, on the starting squares. I typically like to do it, um, I, I like to initiate a, that attack um, so I can at least castle and prevent the opponent from castling. Um, I normally try not to do moves where it opens up uh, my queen to be uh, traded off like that. But Okay, let's go back to this move. Okay, so we defended our knight here, which puts him in a really big advantage and then really good move by him. Yeah, I was really debating between um, taking with the bishop, he takes like this, and then not ruining the pawn structure so I can castle kingside, or doing what I did, which was just taking with the pawn and sort of forcing him back. But I think I made the right play in this decision. So really, he should have just centralized his bishop after this as well. And this, um, so by not putting his bishop on e6 there, it also opens up this file uh, for checks as well. So even just putting the bishop here kind of stops the king, or uh, I guess blocks the king, if you will. You had a better option, but this is not bad. Yeah, really, so I was just trying to um, trade pieces there. This is an inaccuracy. This misses opportunity to develop a queen off of its starting square. Sure. So that pawn was defended, but he just opened up the center. Hmm. So castling long was the play here, huh? Interesting. So if we cast along, he takes, I take, hmm. I don't think it would have mattered too much, honestly, at this point. I don't think this was the worst move, at least for this elo, personally. This permits the opponent to win a rook through an eventual fork. Does it? That's probably a bit too advanced for me. This is the way to win a rook. That wasn't really what I was after, but yeah, I thought it kind of fell apart for him after this move. I, I really think he should have just defended with the bishop. Um, I would tend to agree with the engine there. Right, because his king can't castle. Hmm. Thought that was a decent move, at least. I thought this was just a good tactic because it skewers his queen. 
So I'm surprised that the engine said it's an, an accuracy. Um, I didn't think it was the worst thing, but let's see what uh, it would have done instead. You ignored an opportunity to defend a pawn that was under attack. True, but isn't the queen more valuable? <laughs> oh, sure, and then I see. I see what it's after. So he has the fork on the uh, rook and the king after that. That makes sense. But still, even if he goes through with this fork and he wins a pawn or a rook, that's six points of um, material. Whereas this move wins nine points. So it seems like the bishop on h4 is just a much better move. Maybe someone can correct me on that. And then after that, it was all over. So um, let's see what the engine would have played here. Castle. Something tells me we would not have played these lines. <laughs> Just be perfectly honest. So the other move that I was thinking was to go to a queen e5. And then he'd be forced to one of these squares. So where would he probably go realistically? Probably here, right? Um... So then he can tuck into this little nook here. Um, and then what could I have done from there? Sure, so deliver check. And then he would have been back to where he started. And then, yeah, really, we're kind of just dancing around at this point. Um, sure. So really, his big mistake was just going to a dark square uh, when I had a dark square bishop and he had the open diagonal. So kind of the same logic that we were talking about with the queen there earlier. Um, okay, cool. Well, this is a pretty good game. It's um was a little bit short, but um, I'm glad I I'm glad I found a tactic, a skewer. I don't find those too often in games, so I'm um, pretty happy about that. And uh, GG Negata Tapa Choi from Vietnam. GG, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next game.